Hello, uh, my name is John Colwaite. I am currently a, in program development and outreach at the Boston Higashi School. I am in the middle of my 27th year at the school. I started in 1994 as a long-haired, very idealistic English and philosophy major, not having any clue what to do with life, only that I wanted to do something that made a difference. I really had no idea what to do. I was unloading trucks at UPS. Um, and I had my bachelor's degree and I decided I needed some more money to pay the rent. Uh, so I got out the newspaper and I found nine different places that uh, seemed to be in the field of human services, making a difference, um, and not one of them called me back except the Boston Higashi School. Had no idea who they were, or what they did, and I had never met anyone with autism. I had only seen the movie Rain Man. So I went to this campus in uh, Lexington, Massachusetts, um, where the school was founded uh, when it moved from Japan. Uh, they asked me about my background. I explained that I have a long history of being a cross-country runner. They thought that was the best qualification and asked me when I could start. Um, <laughs> so I started. I was one of the very few uh, non-Japanese people working at the school. I was immediately completely fascinated by these children, um, what they looked like, how they behaved, the glow in their eyes. Um, I was also totally fascinated by the teachers. Um, the teachers, mostly from Japan, were these highly qualified people in their field. The gymnastics, I mean, the gym teacher was like number four in all of Japan in, in martial arts. The music teacher could play 12 different instruments. I mean, the art teacher had exhibited internationally. These are highly competent, highly skilled people who are given the task to work with people who are highly challenged, but also may have some of those skills as well. So immediately I was like, I'm all in, this is awesome. Um, they made me an employment ed teacher, so I had a lot of experience working with the, the young adults in the community and try to bridge that gap, which was quite an adventure. Um, and then I, I wanted more, uh, so I went back to school to get my master's degree in special ed. I'm from Lesley University, and through the kindness of Higashi, uh, I was able to uh, get my degree in special ed. I became a classroom teacher. Then I was, you know, I was, I was waist deep. I may claim a classroom teacher, I was about neck deep. <laughs> and that was a really dynamic, being a classroom teacher for 14 and 15 year olds with autism. So they taught me uh, countless things that I'll hopefully reveal to you later on as we go through this, this uh, talk. I, my passion is art, so I did actually uh, weasel my way into an art position at the school for several years. I actually taught Deb's son Stephen when he came, and I was an elementary art teacher. Um, and then as time went on, I became a supervisor. For, so for 16 years, I was a division director. I ran a younger student's floor, then I ran the older student's floor. And as you probably can see, I like to talk and, and, and be part of the world, so I wanted to use uh, my speaking skills to do more outreach and program development. So I was very able to convince my, my supervisors, God bless them, to give me this position. And actually, I'm kind of doing it today. So thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I continue to learn and grow and, and try to do all I can uh, for the Higashi community. When I first began, like I said, I only knew Rain Man and Dustin Hoffman, and I thought the kids in Higashi were going to start counting toothpicks on the floor. Um, of course, that did not happen. Um, most of the students at Higashi would be called a level two or a level three student right now uh, with the supports that they need. One of my first encounters, or my first impression was, these kids are gorgeous. Why are they so radiantly beautiful? I, I, I was just taken aback. I'd never seen a collection of, of beautiful, radiant youngsters ever. I mean, I went to public ed and, and blah, blah, blah. So I remember maybe the second or third week at Higashi, we had this thing called free play, where the teachers take a break and the special subject teachers, like art, music, PE, or employment ed teachers, uh, take the students for like a modified recess. So we were playing basketball. This very tall child, um, I, he was really good on the court. I mean, I was really encouraging him to, to take shots. And so at the end of the lesson, I thought I kind of bonded with him. We we're, were having fun. It's time to put the basketballs away. I didn't know anything about, you know, leading into a certain transition or preparing somebody's mind. I just said, hey, it's time to put the ball away. Let's put it away. He didn't put it away, so I just kind of took it out of his hand. Uh, and then he gave me some feedback, which was kind of a haymaker to the ear, and that was quite painful. 
and I had to get my ears tested for a month to see if I could still hear. And I thought, okay, these beautiful kids pack a punch. You have to be very careful with how you uh, tread around them. And, um, but very soon I was fascinated by the splinter skills. Children with autism can show you amazing skills in some areas. They, they, the kids might not be able to tie their shoe. They might not say hey, good morning to you, but then I'll see them in jazz band, you know, playing John Coltrane like nobody's business. And that blew me away that there's these, these hidden gems in all these students. And you were trained under day life therapy to dig them out, to find that, that precious bud of self-identity. And once you see it, once you find it, you get greedy. You're like, oh, this kid can do more. I can find more. Let's try him in art. Let's try him in music. Let's take him to the grocery store. Let's go to his house. Let's, let's see what's up. And then once you get that motivation going, you, you, you start to discover what is autism. I think I can kind of say what Deb said. I've been doing this for 26 and a half years and a new student will come next week and I will not know anything about autism when I meet this student. I will have my preconceived notions. I will try to coach people through what we do at a school, but that student will teach us as much as we teach them. And when that bridge is made, then the fun begins.